From the city to rural North America, this is Rural America Live, connecting the people who grow America's food and fiber with those who enjoy it. Call in, let's talk. It's Rural America Live. The National FFA, an organization dedicated to serving the youth of today who are our leaders for tomorrow. Now, if you've been a member or even an FFA member parent, you know that this organization brings a lot to the table and that the people involved in the organization bring a lot to their schools, communities, their country, and of course to the world. Now, if you're not familiar with this amazing group of young people, the National FFA organization is dedicated to making a positive difference in the lives of students by developing premier leadership, personal growth, and career success through agricultural education. Welcome here to Rural America Live on RFD TV and Rural Radio on Sirius XM Channel 80. I'm Janet Adkison, your host for tonight's show, and we have three special guests joining us this evening to talk about this group of young people and, of course, the National FFA Convention, which we will broadcast live from Louisville, Kentucky, and the Convention and Expo Center next week. Joining us tonight is RFD TV's founder and president, Patrick Gotch, also the FFA Director of Strategic Communications, Bill Stagg, and joining us just a bit later. Later in the program is the Tennessee State FFA Secretary, Nick Baker. Now, we want to start things off tonight with a huge announcement. And for that, I want to turn things over to Mr. Patrick Gotch. Hello. Hi, Janet. How are you? I'm good. Well, good. I'm good. Our favorite time of the year it to steal a, a line from Orion Samuelson, <laughs> uh, the National FFA Convention coming up. And it seems an appropriate time. We've been working with FFA for a long time. We've We've made some uh, donations in the past and provided some support in the past. Uh, we're proud to announce uh, tonight that we're in a position to substantially expand our support uh, for the world's premier youth organization. And tonight we're announcing a $5 million uh, donation to the National FFA organization spread out over the next five years, $1 million a year uh, for the next five years, uh, both in cash and in support of, of uh, programming that's going to be on RFD TV on both television and radio. Well, I tell you what, that is very exciting. Of course, that support comes with a commitment, part of that commitment to the FFA convention each year. And of course, as we mentioned, that's coming up next week. Yeah, we, we proudly broadcast the entire convention, all nine sessions. We'll do so again uh, next week, starting on uh, Wednesday night uh, through Saturday. We'll have a little over 30 hours of, of convention coverage. Uh, this year, uh, we're going to uh, up the... Uh, the ante, so to speak, uh, on the pre-session and, and post-session broadcast, just like a, a day, game day uh, broadcast for ESPN on Saturdays. Uh, we'll be out on the plaza in front of Freedom Hall uh, live before each uh, session uh, doing some fun things with the students uh, and uh, teachers that are, that are on site uh, at the convention and trying to get a lot of comments from them, both going into mm -hmm. uh, Freedom Hall and coming out of Freedom Hall uh, after that session, what they're expecting uh, to gain by, by that next session, and, and then what they actually uh, absorb. So it should be a lot of fun. Uh, of course, we're going to really expand our social media uh, presence uh, uh, with that and just uh, see, uh, see how much more fun we can add to uh, the great nine sessions that are carried each year. Well, as you say, certainly going to be a very interactive event that's taking place at the convention this year. Uh, Bill, as far as this uh, commitment to the FFA over the next five years, what does this mean to you, to the FFA Association? This is an extraordinary gift to FFA. And Patrick, on behalf of the National FFA Board of Directors and our national advisor, Dr. Steve Brown, our staff, just thank you. We're so humbled to have this kind of support. What it means for FFA is what it's... It's what it's meant to have this support from RFD over the years. It's provided us a window into the world of FFA, and we're able to show what these young people are doing, what they're accomplishing. But through this, through this donation, through this support, this is a huge picture window. And this lets the premier leadership, the personal growth, the career success, the inspiring stories of what these young people are doing, it drives them home and puts them into households around the country and indeed around the world. We're humbled by it, and Patrick, we thank you so much. Our pleasure, Bill. Now, of course, the history with uh, FFA goes back a little ways, and I know that you are very familiar with that history. Indeed it does. I have enough gray hair here to attest. <laughs> but it was, I didn't say that. You did. <laughs> in 1988, 26 years ago, I got a call from a gentleman in Nebraska, and it was a gentleman by the name of Patrick Gotch. had no idea who that was, and he was just starting something called RFD-TV. 
And he wanted to know if he could work with FFA and if we had stories and we, we wanted to share information and possibly even consider televising the national convention. When we heard his concept, serving rural America, knowing that that's a, it's an area that was underserved and that we really needed to get messages, not just from FFA, but from all things that would benefit rural America, we said yes, absolutely. And in 1988, we broadcast the first FFA convention, thanks to Patrick's support and his vision. That convention, Patrick, I'm guessing may have had 20,000 people in attendance. Right. We're looking at possibly topping 60,000 people at this convention next week. I have to believe that part of that growth and part of the fact that we have record membership in FFA of 610,000, unprecedented, has to be due to that picture window and the support that RFD has provided. And of course, the relationship also has extended beyond the convention itself with a few other experiences in the mix. Which of you would like to talk about some of that? I, well, I recall. Like I said, in the past, we've <clears throat> tried to be in a position to do something. Uh, like Bill said, when we first launched, uh, our main goal or our motto was to serve the needs and interests of rural America. And I don't see how anybody can serve the needs and interests of rural America if you're not involved with the National FFA uh, organization. It, it, uh, it, it's the future of our country. It's the future of how we're going to uh, solve the feeding 9 billion people by the year uh, 2050. Um, these last few years have been very good for most people in agriculture with record commodity prices almost across the board. And, and uh, it's time to really, I think, step up and, and, uh, and reinvest <clears throat> some of that good fortune uh, back into rural America. We've been very fortunate uh, in this last year where we've gained a lot of distribution and picked up some advertisers. Uh, so uh, thankfully, we're in a position to, to make such a donation uh, to FFA. The, the one thing that I've learned in the past with all the things that we've done when we supported uh, uh, bringing Native American uh, students to the uh, convention, the uh, uh, donation during uh, uh, Katrina, the million dollars that we uh, uh, donated a couple years ago, it, it comes back to us in, in over and over and, and over again uh, because we really see the, the, uh, the effect that it has on, on uh, these young people's lives. One of the things I'd like to hear a bit of a story on, this is before I became a part of the RFD team. I was always a part of the team, just wasn't in the, in the broadcast studios yet. But I remember the Rose Bowl Parade and RFD TV making FFA centerpiece of the Rose Bowl Parade here a few years ago. Yeah, we, we created a float. We had a float in, in the Rose Parade that d devoted to FFA uh, called Bill Up uh, and, and wanted to get uh, some of the presidents uh, see if some of the presidents could come to uh, march ahead of the uh, parade in the national officer team. <clears throat> All six officers came and, and were on the float. We had 46 out of 50 state presidents march ahead of the time. And that's, again, that's the kind of support you get back from uh, National FFA. We put it on display in, in the Rose Parade. 150 million people saw, saw the float and, and uh, uh, Bill was trying to give us some credit for helping expand FFA. I hope these things do help expand FFA, that the numbers are treading, trending up the, the way they should be, uh, uh, 610,000 or 18,000 members this year. Uh, since we're talking 1 million all the time, I, I, I hope I live to see the day where FFA has a, a million students. That would be quite impressive, That would, I would be say. our goal. Absolutely. And, and Randy Bernard, our uh, CEO, uh, he got involved with the FFA on the foundation board this year. Um, again, we're, we're here to support rural youth, National High School Rodeo, Little Bridges Rodeo, um, anything we can do to support uh, rural America, rural youth, and encourage rural folks to uh, kids to, to stay or come back to, uh, to uh, even if they become a doctor or a dentist, you know, come back to these rural communities. That's where it's at. Always appreciate their roots. Yeah. That's what I always like to say. Now, Bill, you've had the chance to see uh, some of the students that have come through, I suppose, the ranks over the years, including those students who had the chance to participate in that Rose Bowl Parade and some of the other activities. Uh, tell us what it has meant to these kids to have this national exposure for an organization that they hold just as close as we do. Oh, Janet, it was a game changer for them. They were so proud to represent FFA, rural America, agriculture, and our students, of course, as Patrick knows, were growing in urban areas, and so FFA and agricultural education are in urban, suburban, and rural areas, and we have some of our largest programs in cities like New York and Chicago, but these students were so excited to be there. But I want to back up for a moment. What it's like to get a phone call from Patrick Gotch. I get a call, and it's Patrick. 
Would FFA want to be on a float in the Tournament of Roses parade at the Rose Bowl in front of 150 million people? This is a question that almost answers itself as soon as it comes across. Mm -hmm. Of course we would. We would love to. And he made it possible for us to bring all of our members out there, gave them an experience that they'll never forget, gave us exposure that money can't buy, and, and we could have never dreamed of having that particular moment in the sun. It was a gorgeous day. It was glorious. FFA was a part of something uniquely American and, I would say, international. And that really translated into an excitement, not just for the people who participated in the parade, but for the folks at home and for the families and the communities and everyone that they represented. It was a big, big topic of discussion as we moved up to it. And then it had this fabulous celebration of, of success. Absolutely. Well, that's exciting. One thing I want to say before you, you move on, uh, We've been fortunate enough to meet a lot of great people at, at FFA over the years. The national officer team uh, changes out every year, and the, the one year's better than the next, better than the next, and so on. Great uh, uh, executive support there. But there's been one consistent thing through all 26 years, and that's Bill Stagg uh, with us. It's, it, that's helped uh, uh, build this with us. So uh, the reason we've been able to grow so much is, is the... Uh, the uh, 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 chemistry that we've had uh, with Bill Stagg in building this. Mm -hmm. 26 it's, years. It's very kind. There are more calls that uh -huh. come. And one of them had to do when Katrina hit and terrible hurricane devastated the Gulf Coast states. And so many communities with FFA chapters were, were severely impacted by that. And FFA created a program called Seeds of Hope to raise money to assist those chapters to rebuild. And so we put this campaign together, we put the word out, we were taking donations, and this was in, what, August of 2005. And I show up at the National Convention, and I see Patrick walking in the hall down the convention. He puts a check in my hand, and I think the check at that time was for $50,000. He followed it up with another $100,000 that represented a donation from RFD TV and from your viewers. Right. And this, tonight, is an opportunity to say thank you not just to Patrick, not just to RFD TV, but to all the viewers who have supported you and supported FFA and those chapters that were impacted by that. Very yeah. exciting. Absolutely. Well, I, tell, I know that uh, chapters across the country, of course, would have helped participate in those events as well. So students uh, gathering funds back home to help fellow chapters in an area that, of course, was devastated. But on another note, of course, over 50,000 are expected to attend next week's FFA convention. Now, we, of course, always mention the sea of blue jackets. And when we're focusing on the sea of blue jackets, we're talking about those blue corduroy jackets. So while the jacket is a part of our official dress for the students, sometimes it is tough for a member to afford that official piece of the wardrobe. And with that, the FFA, as well as the FFA Foundation, launched the gift, Give the Gift of Blue program. For 80 years, we have worn the jacket, corduroy blue, emblazoned with the FFA logo. It has been a part of every competition, every convention, every gathering. And over time, it has become more than fabric and thread. The blue jacket has become the unifying cornerstone of our organization. But not everyone can wear the jacket, not because they don't deserve to, but because they cannot afford to. That's where you come in. When you give the gift of blue, you give a student the chance to wear a piece of history, a part of our unity, the blue jacket. You give the chance to feel the pride that comes with wearing this icon of American tradition, this symbol of our past, our present, and our future. To learn more or to make a donation, visit ffa.org slash giveblue and help every member wear the FFA blue jacket and wear it well. Well, again, that FFA blue jacket, certainly a notable piece of the FFA wardrobe. And as we mentioned, kids across the country, chapters across the country, gathering together to give back to other chapters, uh, having a difficult time. And now, of course, community members, alumni, uh, supporters of the FFA gathering together to help individual members who, who have a challenge in getting the FFA jacket. Uh, Bill, tell us a little bit more, dig in a little bit more about this program. Well, everyone knows the familiar blue corduroy FFA jacket. It's an icon of FFA, and it binds all members together. But we have members who come from communities, um, and they could be in rural, urban, suburban areas, and their individual stories don't allow their family to be able to afford that money 
to have that jacket and to be a part and to fit in. When you come to our convention next week, you'll see more than 50,000 young FFA members all wearing that jacket. They're all bound together. But some can't, and they might get a jacket loaned to them by an advisor so that they can go, no name, and it just doesn't have the identification. So we created the Give the Gift of Blue so that people like you and Patrick and me and, and your viewers and others can contribute money to FFA and know that it will go through a process where if there's a worthy FFA member a ne who needs to have some support to get that jacket and be a part of the organization, they can get it through that program. And their advisor will sign and attest that that is indeed the case. This program has had terrific response and I enjoy being able to contribute each year as many of our FFA staff and board members and others do. Um, but we had an extraordinary story this year. Um, we have a former FFA member by the name of Don Ball and his wife Myra who live in Lexington, Kentucky. And Don's a very successful builder and he's made a good life, but he says that if it weren't for FFA, he never would have gotten out of the driveway. In <laughs> conversations with us, Don wanted to do something to transform the lives of FFA members. He and his wife committed $500,000 to create an endowment from which would give jackets to deserving FFA wow. members. It's extraordinary, but Don knows, a former FFA member, former regional officer, he knows what that means to those young people. And it's an extraordinary thing, whether you give one jacket or whether you can do what Don and Myra have done, you're supporting young people who are worth the investment. That's neat. Great That's such story. a neat program. Absolutely. And I, I'll speak on my own personal experience when I was back in FFA. You know, you get the jacket and that's the first step. Right. So you don't realize what a major step you're taking until you've maybe had your first couple experiences in official dress. And then you get your first, you know, your green hand pin. And then you go to your chapter farmer and move on from there. And then you start storing pins inside because you're limited, supposed to be right. limited, of course, to the three outside. Uh, so then you look back on that, and I always like to go in from one event to the next because they dig in their pocket and there's usually a leftover 20 bucks. <laughs> I'll tell you. So that's a small little thing, but you know, what's inside the jacket pocket is always a good question whenever you're at the National FFA convention or any convention, actually, for that matter. So, certainly quite an event. Uh, anything on that that you'd like to add, Patrick? No, I think we should uh, start uh, talking about what the broadcast next week and, and, and lay out the schedule. And you do have a uh, exciting idea and you talked about it previously and I keep referring it to it as a pre-game and post-game show. That, yeah, it's uh, just we're like a game have. day on, on ESPN. We're, uh, F, there's no problem ever getting enthusiasm out of uh, FFA students so uh, we're hoping to have a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand gathered around our uh, broadcast area uh, before the session starts and after the session ends and uh, we're, we're going to have the ability for folks to, uh, to make their own sign uh, on site and hold it up and and just have some fun with it. And then uh, out in the audience, uh, Alexis Bloomer is going to be uh, a part of uh, helping to promote uh, social media and getting uh, uh, tweets uh, uh, during uh, not only our, our pre-session broadcast, but it, in certain sections of the, uh, of the convention uh, broadcast themselves. So uh, we're really going to expand it this year. That sounds very exciting. Well, we're going to talk just a little bit more on that whenever we come back. Of course, we are talking about next week's National FFA Convention. We're going to take our first break. And, of course, whenever we come back, we are going to also start taking calls. So give us a call, 877-731-6733. You can also visit us online, rfdtv.com backslash live, and type in your question on there. More with Patrick Gotch and also our FFA crew when we return. Welcome back to Rural America Live here on RFD TV and Rural Radio on Sirius XM Channel 80. Janet Atkinson here with you. And tonight we are focusing on the National FFA Convention. Of course, that will be held in Louisville, Kentucky next week. Our phone lines are open. That number is 877-731-6733. Or you can go online to rfdtv.com slash live and type in your question as well. Now we will be front and center once again broadcasting from the annual event with a new twist that we just touched talked about here a bit before the break, the pre-session and post-session interactive broadcast where we will talk with FFA members and of course FFA supporters. And Patrick, digging into that a little bit more, uh, you mentioned we are going to expand our social media coverage whenever you're talking about teenagers, college students, I can't think of a better way to <laughs> be more interactive with them. Uh, right, and, and again we're going to be encouraging that uh, in these pre-sessions and post-sessions and during the convention itself. And 
See where it goes. See where it goes. I think it's going to be an We're adventure. We're making this up as we go along. <laughs> Which keeps everybody on their toes. I always mm -hmm. like that. Now, also, we talked a little bit about we're going to encourage kids to bring some posters and add those into the mix. Hold those up in the show as well, too. Yes, indeed. If you've ever seen the Today Show and you've seen the people with the signs behind, our members know how to do this. They know how to promote their <laughs> chapter, so we're going to challenge them to bring their signs and get it seen on RFD TV. It's going to be fun. Patrick, what I like about what we're doing is we're giving the convention, the, the broadcast, back to the members. Right. They're going to be psyched. Right. It's going to be great. I, I see a lot of enthusiasm building as we speak. Now, speaking of enthusiasm, we decided to bring a young whippersnapper, so to speak, onto the show here this evening. We have Nick Brown. Nick is the state FFA secretary for the state of Tennessee. Uh, Nick Baker, he has uh, joined us to join the adventure this evening. So, Nick, first of all, uh, are you excited about the convention next week? Oh, I can't wait. I'm, 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 I'm very, very excited to be there. And uh, speaking directly to the pre-sessions, really the moment that I realized that I was going to be a dedicated active FFA member was during the pre-session because you walk into the convention center and you're surrounded by 16,000 other blue corduroy FFA jackets with all this loud music, dancing, all the energy, enthusiasm. And so uh, really the, the pre-sessions are a blast and I really I'm, I'm can't wait to get started with convention. Well, that's great. Well, I want to hear more stories on that again. Give us a call if you have a FFA experience that you would like to share. We certainly would love to hear about it. 877-731-6733. That's 877-731-6733. Now, Nick, if we talk about your uh, convention experience this year, you actually have some different responsibilities because you will be a convention delegate. I will actually... Um Earlier this summer, we had State President's Conference in Washington, D.C., where every state president and state secretary joined together in Washington, D.C. to uh, determine what the delegate committees were going to be. And essentially, those committees determine what changes are going to be proposed to the National FFA Board of Directors. And so, for instance, this year, uh, the Tennessee State Officer Team proposed a program to uh, expand the story of the National FFA organization, which obviously has been uh, helped by the RFD TV. Uh, and then as well, there are committees that are focused on membership development as far as our middle schools are concerned. Really, the delegate process is going to be uh, very interesting and very beneficial to the national organization as a whole. You're actually placing votes and making decisions for the organization, so uh, the responsibility falls on you guys. Yes, ma'am. We, we really, it's, it's an honor to be a delegate. Get a national convention. Wonderful. Now, I do understand that we have a call coming in. We're going to turn to that in just a moment. But before we do, I do want to highlight our convention's broadcast schedule for next week. So we have uh, following the schedule from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, Wednesday kicking in there at uh, 6 30, of course, right there in the evening. That is the kickoff session for the show. And what an energetic time to attend. I know a lot of uh, kids across the country travel to take in that experience there. Yeah, all these times are Eastern, we should point all out. All Eastern time, that's right, <clears throat> all Eastern times. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Thursday schedule and the session that we'll be running. Of course, you can tune in whether you are at home or maybe you're crashing in uh, a hotel Let's back up just way. a second. Bill, who's go the ahead. speaker on, on uh, the opening sessions this year? Um, opening session speaker is Nick Vujicic. And Nick is an extraordinary individual who is a motivational speaker and fully qualified to do it. He has no limbs, and yet he gets around, has a marvelous perspective on life, and his basic message is, if I can do this, what problems do you have? <clears throat> what problems can you not overcome? Yeah. And he will be speaking at three opening sessions because that's how heavy the attendance is for that first part of the convention. And, and, and these, these uh, speakers are extraordinary at every year at if you just you don't you don't see it. and ffa always comes up with a surprise speaker that just absolutely blows me away and blows everybody that uh, that is watching away so uh the, these sessions are, are extremely important to tune into I know I still enjoy sitting in on those sessions and the guest speakers, not only the guest speakers that are coming in motivational wise, but also just the FFA crowd. They certainly have some great things to say as well. Now, we do have a caller joining us now. We have Stephanie from West Virginia. Stephanie, why don't you go ahead with your question? Yes. Uh, how many chapters do you have across the U.S.? There are about 7,600 chapters, 7,650 chapters throughout the United States. And a chapter is in a local school program that has agricultural education. You cannot have an FFA chapter unless the school is teaching agriculture. Some of those are in middle schools, but most of them would be in secondary schools. And there are some uh, pre-high school programs starting, like you say, the, the middle mm -hmm. schools that sort of kind of get the kids 
uh, started in that direction with a little bit of uh, extra outreach earlier than what some of us had the opportunity to be exposed to back in our day. Exactly <laughs> right. Exactly right. Some of the, the cutest, uh, I shouldn't say cutest, <laughs> but, but some of the, the uh, most impressive faces that I see at convention each year are, those, are the real youngest ones that yeah. are just seeing 50,000 yeah. blue quarter jackets or, or in that uh, uh, convention hall like uh, with 16,000 other people and, and uh, to see that you can see they're hooked on FFA for the rest of their rest of their uh, high school career. Patrick, I think you nailed it right there. Whenever you get out and, you know, high school can be a challenging time for kids, yeah. for anybody. And to see and have the opportunity, of course, to know that there are folks out there with similar interests, similar backgrounds, small communities, getting out and venturing into the world, always a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. Nick, but, I'm sure you can add in on that. Oh, well, really, FFA is so special to so many different people uh, in so many different ways. I've spoken to FFA members this year serving as a state officer that have said that uh, without FFA, they wouldn't have had a home in high school. And so uh, it's really fascinating and inspiring to hear what our organization can do for the youth of today. And, and 610,000 FFA members are benefiting every day uh, from the leadership development that takes place in our organization. Very exciting. Let's go back to day two. That's right. We covered Wednesday. Let's take a look at Thursday's schedule that we have for next week. Again, broadcasting on RFD TV and Rural Radio. There you go. The session kicking off at <coughs> 1.30 in the afternoon, 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock. Keynote speakers throughout all each session. We have a keynote speaker that evening, Donnie Smith, who's the president and CEO of Tyson Foods, is going to speak. Oh, wow, good. And so when our FFA members come, we want them to be inspired by motivational speakers. We want them to hear about education, about agriculture, and issues that are important to them. And so to get somebody of Donnie's position to spend time with these members is truly inspiring for them. And that that uh, second session on uh, on Thursday, Jen, it's one of my favorites all the time. It's the uh, talent review yeah. uh, where uh, these, these uh, students get up and uh, either with a band or solo and, uh, and put their singing or, or, or other talent on display uh, in front of 16,000 in the Coliseum and broadcast on, on national TV. So uh, it, it, there's some really <laughs> great talent there, too. Absolutely. And I know, actually, for a fact that we've had some FFA talent over the years that have gone off and had a recording contract, uh, big careers, and some of these uh, talents that they have and that they shared at the National FFA Convention before. Well, they really have fun with that. So it, th that's something the audience really enjoys, too. Absolutely. Well, that is the uh, talent taking place there on Thursday. Now, we do have another caller joining us. We have Bob from North Dakota stepping in. Bob, what's your question? Uh, I don't have a question. I just uh, I'm excited to watch the um, program, and, and uh, um, I'll be glued to the TV for the whole broadcast. I think. Uh, but anyway, I um, I uh, was a president of um, of our local chapter of FFA when I graduated from high school, in 1948. Our advisor, if I remember, I was Harold White, and uh, we had a. Um, we had a class of, uh, I think there were around 45 or 50 members in our organization at that time. And uh, it's, uh, it was a great organization, and, and uh, I've had a relatively successful uh, career involved in livestock auctions uh, most all my life. And uh, a lot of that had to do with, um, with getting a good education at Lemon. Well, Bob, I bet you had some interesting experiences and seen a lot of changes as far as the FFA organization is concerned over the years. We certainly appreciate well, you calling us. I sure have, no doubt about that. Well, Bob, thank you very much. Yeah, one thing we should mention, uh, Janet, the, the number one question I get each and every year is, oh, I missed this session, oh, I missed this award. Uh, when are you going to replay it again? We, we, unfortunately, we don't repeat the broadcasts. They're all live. So I really encourage people, and especially this time of year when it is such a busy time and so many folks out in the fields and, and, and harvesting. Set those DVRs, set those, uh, get it recorded because uh, we can't air it. And then, Bill, you might want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the streaming, the other option to watch the broadcast this year. Indeed. If you're one of the unfortunate people who can't receive RFD TV, you have a chance to watch the conventions through the Internet. And these sessions are, are streamed on iHi. And if you go to the FFA, FFA website at FFA.org, you can 
get this information. But you can watch these sessions streamed and you'll see the pre-sessions that right. we're going to do beforehand. So you can get all of that through the internet. And those sessions will be archived so that you can go back and, and watch these again. Because undoubtedly there's 30 some hours that we're getting an incredible, generous gift from RFD TV, but you'll, you're going to miss something. So you'll be able to go back and experience it through the internet. And, and one other thing I should mention, Janet, and, and shout out, throw out a thank you to a lot of our programmers give up their programming time now. Uh, obviously, some of these, uh, you know, in the afternoons and mornings and, and, and prime time, our programmers are giving up their time and, and donating their time to the FFA so these broadcasts can be carried live. So mm -hmm. we certainly want to acknowledge and, and thank them. And then everybody understands that the next week we return back to our, our regular schedule. But 30 hours of programming will be preempted uh, next week, Wednesday through Saturday. All in the spirit of FFA. Absolutely. So, And also, I'm going to add in that you don't want to forget that you can also tune in on Sirius XM Channel 80. We'll be oh, broadcasting right. the convention as well, too. Looky there. I remember Listen things. <laughs> now, we do have another caller joining us, Agnes from Kentucky. Agnes, go ahead with your question. Uh, honey, I really don't have a question. I wanted to talk to Patrick. He asked me if I'd call and talk to him while they while, while he had the line open. Well, that sounds good. I, I'm from Kentucky, and I talk. He talks to me. I don't talk to him because he talks to me, and he asks me to call. <laughs> <laughs> what are you uh, What are you sipping on tonight, Agnes? <laughs> um, not anything but Pepsi. <laughs> okay. Did, do you have a comment? Uh, I, I'm from Kentucky, and I, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, and I hope you all have a great time. Well, Agnes, we appreciate that thank very you, much. Agnes. Thank you, and thank Time Warner in, in uh, Louisville for carrying uh, RFD TV. They added it, RFD TV to the entire state of Kentucky last year at this time, just uh, so the FFA convention could be uh, uh, carried to the cable homes in, in Kentucky in, in addition to DISH and Direct TV. Well, good deal. Now, also moving on through, we talked about Wednesday and Thursday's programming lineup. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Friday lineup for our live coverage from the National FFA Convention. We kick off, of course, at 8 o'clock in the morning. That is the fourth convention session, uh, fifth session there at noon, and, of course, a pre-session then at 2.30 that afternoon, kicking into the sixth convention session. So we have a uh, convention convention, and it's all kinds of fun. Well, explain a little bit what these yeah. sessions are, Bill. Well, the sessions contain... A no, I mean the 4th, the 5th, and the 6th. 4th and 5th, sec um, these sessions are going to largely consist of similar events. We're going to be recognizing the accomplishments of members. But this morning that we're going to have on Friday, you're going to hear from another captain of industry from agriculture, and that is Jeff Simmons, who is the president of Elanco. Jeff's a former FFA member from New York. He was the star agribusinessman from the 80s thereabouts, and Jeff has an extraordinary message for young people. So between Donnie and Jeff, you're really hearing some great perspectives from agriculture. We'll also honor our ag teachers and pay um, respects to the FFA members who have earned their awards and recognition. So there's a lot happening in this particular session, but you'll also hear retiring addresses from our national officers. And I think for many people, this is a highlight. If you're in the auditorium, you're inspired by the messages that these young national officers have. And if you're watching this at home, it's just like being right there in the auditorium. Each one of these individuals has traveled the country throughout the year, met thousands of FFA members, brought the message of agriculture to communities that have never been exposed to it before, have inspired members to set goals, and have basically been our ambassadors, if you will. And they are inspiring the Nick Bakers of tomorrow who are on their way up and becoming officers. But more importantly than that, they're inspiring FFA members and local programs to serve their communities, which is really the ultimate expression of our leadership program, to get young people to take responsibility for their communities and to contribute through service. So it'll be an exciting day, lots to see, and great FFA talent as well. And Absolutely. to hear this talk of having uh, National FFA Convention on TV and to have it on radio, it's really uh, inspiring, and I think it speaks to the progressive tradition that we have in FFA. Uh, the first national convention we had in Kansas City, Missouri, had 33 farm boys from 18 different states, and to hear that you know we're having it broadcasted nationally with 
you know, 60,000 different FFA members. It's really uh, inspiring, and again, it speaks the, to the progressive tradition that we have in our organization. And one other programming note, uh, Janet, it was at the top of that page, but uh, we always have a rule that we would never uh, interrupt market day report. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to do so on Friday uh, morning, uh, on, on the Friday sessions. Market day report will be on the radio, uh, rural radio live, uh, but the TV, we will preempt a market day report during those uh, hours in the morning and, and early afternoon for the Friday sessions. There we That's go. how important it is, we feel, to, to carry this. I can certainly appreciate that. Well, we do have another caller coming in. We have Jim from California. Jim, why don't you go ahead with your question? Well, it's not a question. I'm, I'm a retired ag teacher who, unfortunately, I can't go to the convention next year, next week, because I'm covering for a ag, couple of ag teachers <laughs> that are um, going to be there at the convention. And, you know, I went to my first convention in 1965, and uh, then went to college and, and graduated from there and spent a lot of time in the industry. In 1991, I became an ag teacher. And uh, from, for, from my perspective, that was the greatest career change I've ever had. And it gave me an opportunity to work with a lot of young people. And, and I'm so proud to see these young people grow and, and, and become very successful people in, in the industry. And luckily, in, in the early 2000s, um, one of our former students, Dave White, was the uh, National FFA president. And, and to know that Dane now is, is an ag teacher, uh, very successful, and, and it just it makes, it makes me proud that you folks are taking the time uh, out of your programming to uh, introduce the rest of the country to this great program that, that allows young people to become very successful. Thank you, Jim. Great comment. Yeah, thank you very much. And I tell you what, the relationship that students build with their ag teacher, I mean, I still keep in touch with my FFA advisor. So all very important relationships and uh, certainly appreciate what they contribute to our lives as we move on up. Now, we also have another call coming in. This is Grace from Kentucky joining us. And Grace, why don't you go ahead with your question? Whoops, I have Michaela from South Carolina. We lost Grace there. Michaela, why don't you Hi. go ahead? Hi, I was wondering about how long does it take to plan the National FFA Convention? Uh -oh. Michaela, I have to tell you that when one convention closes, we begin planning the next. And the actual truth is we're already planning two and three years ahead. It takes that long. Part of that is the size of the convention. Uh, not only do you bring 63,000 people last year to the, to the community, but the number of hotel rooms, the restaurants, the support facilities that you need is extraordinary because there are so many events happening in a city at one time. So we know where we're going for the next six, seven, eight years, and we have to plan out <clears throat> that far. We don't take people to New York, we don't take them to <laughs> LA, we don't take them to Chicago, but we need a small enough community that provides safety and security and what's necessary to put on an agricultural student event. So it takes a lot of planning, there's a lot of dedicated people, but it takes thousands of volunteers each year to be able to pull off the convention. And one note to add on that, I've, like Bill said, I've been going to conventions off and on for 26 years. I've never heard of a problem a discipline problem with with uh, with any uh, student uh, there to have 63,000 young people at one location and very you know uh, the ratio of students to adult supervision yeah. is uh, is very uh, high so uh, it's a tribute every year to to, uh, to the students that go there and, and behave like they're supposed to behave uh, they have a lot of fun, but they're also there to, uh, they do. to do some business, too. Absolutely. I can say that even the honorary folks that I went to school with even behaved. Yeah. yeah. And that's a friendly shout out, honestly. So I really think we is. got Saturday left. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, we do have uh, Saturday left on the schedule, but we also have another caller calling in. Mm -hmm. We uh, have, can have Grace back on the line with us, Grace from Kentucky. Okay. I just wanted to give a big shout out to the Franklin Simpson FFA Kentucky. They're a kind of small chapter. And they're taking six teams to the National Agri-Science Fair next week with our advisors, Samuel Evans and Felicia Dalton. So, fingers crossed we do really well. So. What are you competing in? Um, we have six different teams in the National Agri-Science wow. Fair um, out of only about 100 students in our chapter. Well, congratulations to you guys. That's, that's impressive. Excellent. Six teams. And, and really, it speaks to uh, just how much there's really the, the variety of opportunity that there is in FFA. We have the AgriScience Fair. We have the national FFA talent there at convention. And so uh, Grace brings up an excellent point in saying that, that really 
Um, the opportunities for our members to succeed are, are endless, and they all culminate at National FFA Convention. Now, they certainly do. Now, we've covered the schedule. Before we uh, slip away, we do want to take a look at the Friday and Saturday schedule. Actually, we talked about Friday. Let's pull up our Saturday schedule, broadcast schedule, for next week in the National FFA Convention. Again, kicking off bright and early in the morning on Saturday, and uh, that is the 8th Convention session. And, of course, we will have a post-session wrap as well. And then on Saturday afternoon, 1.30, the pre-session, but that session is, uh, it's huge because that's where we have the national officers announced, right? Oh, it is. Um, we have another wonderful speaker, Jane Herlong, who is a Southern humorist, got a great message for young people. But I think the real highlight of the convention, that final closing session, is when we elect our new national officers. Right. And if you missed fireworks on the 4th of July, you want to catch this session because you will see young people jump 20 feet out of their chair with excitement and enthusiasm for being selected to serve for this organization. But all of our candidates that come, and there could be 35 to 40 candidates, are extraordinary young people who represent significant accomplishment, any one of whom could do a terrific job. But those six who are selected, it just goes crazy at this at this point. And here you see the, the national officer team that's that's being elected. They rush to the stage. They don't even know what they're in for yet. But they know that this is something that they've dreamed about and aspired to. And now it's their turn to provide leadership for the next year. And I'll tell you, they work 80 hours a week, double time. Yeah. Some imagine. of the things that moved over the years is, is the uh, the Stars Over America pageant. Is that Saturday now? Is that moved from Thursday to Saturday yet? Well, we still announce our stars at um, various times, and so we'll have the stars um, video recaps, which sort of describe what they're doing. And these stars, we haven't talked about them yet, represent the highest awards that people earn in the, in the pursuit of the American FFA degree. We have a star, in, uh, the Star Farmer, of course, which was the original award, star in agribusiness, star in agriscience, and star in agricultural placement. Mm -hmm. And on the basis of their supervised agricultural experience programs, all of their leadership, all of their community service, they're evaluated, and these are outstanding young people. And when we mentioned Jeff Simmons before, he was a star in agriculture business years ago. And then the American Degree Awards, Saturday morning? We'll Saturday morning, you've got young people, 3,700 young people who have earned this prestigious degree. They've been working for years in their agricultural education, supervised experience, and community service, FFA activities, and they're, being, they're receiving their degrees, and for them this is quite an honor. Families come in, and as you know, Patrick, this is big people for mom and dad Back home. home. Absolutely. We carry every one of them. And, and thanks to our sponsors. I'm not really sure, and I should know who our sponsors are this year, but we carry this all with, with very, very limited commercial interruptions. The commercials are really during pre-session and, and after session's over. Well, I tell you, you mentioned the sponsors, and one thing that we do know about the sponsors, they are huge supporters of FFA and about these kids coming up and moving on through the ranks and being employees, if not leaders, of these companies down right. the road. Well, we are going to take a break. Of course, we're going to take our final break. And when we come back, we'll be talking more with you on the telephone. Again, that phone number, 877-731-6733. Rural America Live continues right after this. And welcome back to Rural America Live on RFD TV and on Rural Radio on Sirius XM Channel 80. Janet Adkison here with you. Again, our phone lines are open, seven, or rather 877-731-6733. And, of course, we would love to hear from you. Your FFA experience, oh, actually, even your convention experience would be great as well. Now, tonight we are also focusing on the National FFA Convention that will be broadcast live here on RFD TV and on Rural Radio as well. That will be taking place in Louisville, Kentucky next week. Another important segment of the organization that takes place during the convention is the National Day of Service. That is an integral part of the organization. And I'm going to turn to Bill to talk a little bit about this. Although there is a highlight of the National Convention, this National Day of Service, it's something that chapters also do back home as well. It is indeed. And at the National Convention, we've put together something that we call National Days of Service. And it's an opportunity for our FFA members to demonstrate what they've acquired through service learning and to give back to the community that is hosting us and doing so much to put on a successful convention. So hundreds of FFA members will fan out throughout Louisville at various locations. Some of them will work in food banks. Some of them will work in parks and recreation to plant trees. Some of them will work to capture video 
stories that benefit programs that are trying to benefit um, young people who are experiencing issues. And so through these days of service, we demonstrate to the community what we have learned through service learning, and we're also able to give back. So it's huge. We also have a national delegate day of service, and the delegates do the same thing. Well, very exciting opportunity. I know that the kids, there's hundreds, thousands of kids that go do this at the National Convention. Nick, you've participated in this yourself before. Yes, ma'am, and it's another uh, example of FFA members that are crazy and enthusiastic about service. And service is really something that's uh, sewn into the history of our organization. Uh, in 1942, we only had 217 delegates at our National FFA, uh, pardon me, National FFA Convention uh, because we had so many working uh, in World War II. And so really service is uh, a tradition in our organization. As far as the National Day of Service is concerned, uh, I was a part of that both uh, my sophomore and junior year and it's really uh, a, a great time. I had the opportunity to work in the rally to fight hunger and we packaged uh, meals and fed over I, I believe 200,000 people in a matter of about 45 minutes and so it's really uh, miraculous what our FFA members are capable of. Absolutely amazing. Well let's go to the phone lines once again. We have Tristan from Pennsylvania joining us. Tristan, why don't you go ahead with your comment? Hello, Tristan. Hello. How are you? Good. <laughs> Sounds like Tristan has her friends joining us. Did you have a comment for us this evening? Yeah. Um, I joined FFA this year, and it's seriously just been the most amazing thing ever. Um, the people there are just amazing. I've learned so much, and I... <laughs> just love it. The people there are amazing. I consider them my family. I have just had our CDE testing and it was really good. Oh. And Tristan, are you going to be at the convention next week? Um, no, actually I can't. Which means you'll be tuning in on RFD, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's what we love to hear. Somebody who's just gotten started and they've already seen what this organization holds for them. Um, absolutely. And, and Tristan, uh, speaking directly to Tristan, really You've just begun your FFA career, and I can tell you from experience that you're in for really a, a miraculous, incredible ride. And I know as a freshman FFA member that I had no idea what I was in store for, so um, I'd just like to congratulate Tristan. That's, that's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. Made the first step. Well, let's go to the phone lines once again, and we have Pam from West, Virg West Virginia joining us. Pam, go ahead with your comment. Um, yes, I just had a, a question. There are no FFA chapters um, in our area, and I just wondered how you go about getting um, information on how to, to start an FFA chapter in your area. Our favorite question. Yeah. Love, love this question. Pam, thank you for it. An FFA chapter is an integral part of a local program of agricultural education, meaning your local high school or even your middle school needs to be teaching agriculture. So the student organization is one of three components of what we call agricultural education. Um, if you can get that agricultural education program, you can have an FFA chapter, but you can't put a chapter in a school that doesn't teach agriculture because FFA activities are an outgrowth of what's taught in the classroom and supervised agricultural experience, and so the three components must work together. And that's what makes FFA so unique. So their first step is going to the school board? and Go to the school board, but each state has a state supervisor of agricultural education. And working through FFA, if you contact the National FFA Center at 317-802-6060, just ask for the um, Partner, division, director, Tony Small, he will give you instructions, connect you to all the resources you need. Great, great question, and I hope your community is served by an agricultural education program soon. Pam, thank you for the call, and as he said, you know, you can go through the FFA organization to help set that up. If you didn't get the phone number written down, of course, you can go online to the FFA website, ffa.org, for additional details there as well. Now, we do have another caller joining us. We have Stephanie from West Virginia. Stephanie, go ahead with your comment. Hi. Uh, I think Pam just uh, kind of asked the question that I was going to ask her. She answered it. Uh, I was wondering if there were any plans to implement FFA in middle schools. My son goes to a brand new high school that just opened two years ago, and uh, of course his little sister goes to the middle school and would like to be involved. But uh, I think that just answered the question that you have to have the agricultural education in motion. 
Indeed. Uh, the FFA advisor is an agriculture teacher, and so we have many middle school programs. And if your system is interested in one, same contact at the FFA center can help you. Thank you very much for the call. Now, I do want to move on here before we uh, wrap things up this evening. One of the things that we've talked about a little bit beforehand was the career network that's available. Um, this is huge for young people coming up into an agriculture career and even people in a career right now looking to expand their horizons. It is. If you look at the FFA mission, it's developing students' potential for premier leadership, personal growth, and career success. And when you look at what it takes for career success and how to get young people through their educational pathway to a job that suits their talents and their interests. The Agricultural Career Network is where we make this happen. Students create portfolios, they keep track of their accomplishments, their awards, their degrees, their activities, and this builds so that they develop a resume that helps them when they apply for colleges, when they apply for scholarships, when they apply for internships, and ultimately when they apply for jobs. So what we're building is really a human resource pipeline that takes young people who are enthusiastic about agriculture, guides them through an educational pathway that meets their needs and connects them to employment opportunities. And industry is helping us do that because they see FFA as a talent pool, giving them their future leaders, managers, and workers. Okay, now we've got our closing comments coming up here in just a moment, but one final call. Irvin from Indiana, go ahead with your comment. Irvin? All right. Well, apparently Irvin's uh, hasn't turned his indisposed. TV down. He hasn't turned his TV down yet. Uh, with that, let's do recap here what we started at the beginning of the show. Huge announcement uh, Patrick made here for us this evening, uh, dedicated for RFD TV, Rural Radio, and FFA here over the next few years. Yeah, we announced a, a $5 million five-year donation to FFA. We hope that it inspires others. Uh, to step it up both in, in agriculture and especially on the local level, help, helping that local chapter, uh, that state chapter, uh, to, to really build this organization to an, into a, even a, a better success, a bigger success. Uh, you know, I, I would love to see one day where there's one million members uh, in the FFA. I think that's a goal to shoot for. It's a lofty goal, but I, I, I think it's certainly obtainable if communities like the folks, uh, Pam and in West Virginia can, can, uh, can uh, initiate uh, uh, FFA chapters starting in all these schools that, that don't have, uh, I don't know how many total school districts there are in this country, but uh, 7,000, 7,900 is a big number, but there's still a lot of schools that, that do not have an FFA chapter. That is very true. Well, thank you very much. Any last comments that you'd like to share, Bill? You know, FFA is, has something in common with RFD TV, and that is that we're in it for the long haul. We connect with a student when they're in middle school, when they're a freshman, and we stick with them and help provide opportunities that carry them right on into their career and even beyond. The Agricultural Career Network is something that a student and a, and a new uh, person entering career field can use. RFD is in it for the long haul, and the support that Patrick has given to FFA and RFD TV over the years, in it for the long haul, and we are so proud to receive that. And we take that as a trust, and we promise to do everything we can to wring every, every member out of every dollar, Patrick. We're going to hit that million members. Thank you. Nick, just it, uh, 30 seconds. Give us a kind of a last thought from you. Uh, well, it's, it's just really uh, heartwarming to see how parallel the end goals are for RFD TV and FFA, how similar they are, because we serve as advocates of the industry of agriculture and the mission of FFA, the purpose of our organization is to develop the future of agriculture. And so on behalf of the membership of our national organization, I'd just like to thank you for your support Thanks, of our organization. It's, it's uh, members like you that inspire us to do this. Oh, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Well, with that, we bring this tonight's show to the close. We've been talking with Nick Baker. He is the Tennessee State FFA Secretary Patrick Gotch and also Bill Stagg. He is with FFA. Thank you for joining us tonight here on Rural America Live. Be sure to tune in to the national FFA co coverage next week on RFD TV. And of course, good night from Rural America's most important network.